Hello everyone and welcome back to Scandinavian Design 101. I'm Sanna. I'm Andreas and we are two Swedes and we love design. Yeah, yeah. And in this video we're gonna give you a brief introduction to the life and career of the Danish furniture designer Paul Kjærholm. In contrast to most other Danish uh, furniture designers, Kjærholm preferred steel over wood when designing furniture. And his creations are definitely a bit more strict and geometric than most other Danish furniture at the time. Some people love his design, others find them way too sterile and strict. But no matter what, Paul Kjærholm was without doubt one of the most influential furniture designers in Denmark during the last century. Uh, but let's take it from the beginning. Let's do! Paul Kjærholm was born in 1929 in the small community of Östervrå in the northern mm. part of the country. When he was seven years old, the family moved to close by Jörring, mm. a somewhat larger town. Soon the young Kjærholm found an interest in carpentry, how you do that when yeah. you're young. But, yeah. And at the age of 15, he was hired as an apprentice at the local joinery workshop of TH Grönbeck where he was taught the skills of joinery and cabinet making. At the workshop, he learned the importance of craftsmanship and quality. Indeed, something he would remember for the rest of his career. Parallel with the practical work, he also studied at the Göring Technical School to receive a formal education mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. You gotta do it. Yeah. After four years, the 19-year-old Kjærholm received a certificate of apprenticeship in which Grönbeck wrote, I consider Paul Kjærholm Niel Nielsen, mm -hmm. I didn't know that, to be a talented, diligent, and highly capable young man. Yeah. Well, that's nice. That's nice. Guess, uh, Why was he called Nielsen? Yeah, yeah I, I, I think he was born. Uh, he was called Nielsen. as a child, yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's not as catchy, is it? <laughs> no, <laughs> P-K-N. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, mm. but in 1949, Kjærholm was accepted as a student at the furniture school at the School of Arts and Crafts in Copenhagen, like everyone else. Yeah. <laughs> um, the, uh, the three years he came to study at the school were highly important for his f further career as a designer, not least because one of his teachers was the one and only Hans J. Wegner. And Wegner took an active interest in Kjærholm and hired him to work part-time in the Wegner studio. Here Kjærholm learned the importance of geometry when designing. Light and structure played a crucial part when designing successful furniture. The drawings made by Kjærholm during this time were not surprisingly mainly inspired by Wegner. For example, a flag halyard uh, easy chair he made a drawing of in 1951. In order to graduate, the students had to create a graduation project that was technically sound and displayed artistic merit. Um, in the spring of 1951, uh, Kjærholm started working on his project, a one-piece steel chair with halyard upholstery. A first prototype was finished by Kjærholm himself in the summer of 1951 in a small blacksmith's uh, workshop in his hometown of Jöring. Uh, the result uh, was the chair later named PK25, a minimalistic yet elegant creation totally free uh, from decorations or unnecessary elements. It was definitely innovative, but the combination of steel and flag halyard was obviously inspired by Wegner's GE225 designed by, uh, for uh, Gitama one year earlier. Kjærholm graduated in 1952 and the PK-25 gave him immediate recognition. Mm. When it was exhibited at the Danish Museum of Arts and Design the same year, the manufacturer Fritz, ha Fritz? <laughs> <laughs> Fritz Hansen showed interest in it. Soon Kjærholm was hired at the company and a small number of PK-25 chairs were produced. His job at Fritz Hansen was to experiment with new materials and production methods. He worked mainly in steam bed wood and molded plywood. Some of his prototypes were showed at the exhibition of applied arts in Zürich in 1952. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Yeah. I think so in English too, yeah. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Among other things, a wooden version of the PK-25 and a matching table could be seen. That sounds 
great. Yeah, it's uh, fantastic <laughs> furniture. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The same year, Charholm also exhibited a system of self-assembled furniture at the Cabinet Makers mm. Guild exhibition, designed together with his former classmate Jürgen Hoy. Yeah, I don't know him. <laughs> no. Uh, after only a year, Kjærholm left Fritz Hansen on all but good terms. Uh, during his time, he was working on a sculptural uh, molded plywood chair, highly inspired by, by the LCW, designed by the Eameses in the US. You've all seen that one. Mm-hmm. And when finished with the design, he asked the director, Søren Hansen, to prepare the prototype for serial production. But uh, Hansen explained uh, that the company was busy producing the first batch of ant shares recently designed by Arne Jakobsen, uh, producing two different plywood uh, shares at the same time was not possible and uh, hardly economically sound. And this was the final straw for Kjærholm, who gave the company an ultimatum to choose between the ant share and the PK share. And sadly for Kjærholm, the, cho- the choice uh, was simple. And the furious Kjærholm left the company never to return. Uh, but he was allowed to bring the prototype share with him uh, when he left in a gesture of goodwill from the company. They could have left, they just kept it. Yeah. Um, the share was not put into uh, production elsewhere, but the prototype was pictured in a 1955 edition of the famous design magazine Mobilia and gained a lot of recognition. At the time, Kjærholm was already working on completely different projects and the share wasn't put into production until 1997 when Fritz Hansen produced a limited edition of 600 pieces and then naming it uh, PK0, like the first PK share. Uh, And finally, this year, in 2022, uh, it was actually... uh, Fritz Hansen actually decided to start serial production of the PK Mm. Zero. Yeah. Yeah. The following years, Kjærholm participated in several different projects, among them assisting Jörn Utsson with designing lamps for Nordisk Solar and designing furniture for architects Erik Herlöv and Palle Suvensson. Yeah. That's a funny name. Yeah. In 1953, he was approached by the manufacturer Chris, Chris, Chris Sörensen, yeah. who was impressed by the plywood chair and wanted Kjærholm to produce similar furniture for him. An agreement was made and Kjærholm was hired to design a small, lightweight chair as well as to develop the graphic profile for the company. Mm. The first chair developed for Sørensen was a small side chair with three detachable steel legs and a seat made from molded um, aluminium. Yeah. The tongue twister. Yeah. The chair was uh, minimalistic yet graceful and totally adapted for industrial mass production. Nevertheless, only 20 chairs were ever produced. Yeah. He also designed a bent aluminum chair and a strange-looking one-legged stackable chair with a wooden seat, but none of these were put into production. And to be honest, the one-legged chair looks way too unstable. Uh, and calling it the stackable chair is not completely true. Stacking these chair, uh, these quite heavy steel chairs would probably be like playing jackstraw or something. At the same time, Kjærholm also made a long range of sketches for logotypes and stationery for the company, and he combined the initials for Chris Sørensen and Paul Kjærholm, um, clearly with high ambitions to create a whole range of PK furniture for this company. Uh, but this would never happen. For somewhat unclear reasons, Sørensen suddenly fled to Canada in 1955, uh, refusing to pay uh, Kjærholm royalties for the 20 shares uh, produced. Fled from who? I don't know. <laughs> it was like tax reasons or oh. something. I, I don't know. But in a rude letter, he cl- uh, claimed that Kjærholm wasn't typically Danish and that his furniture had no chance to find a market in North America. So, he, <laughs> yeah, perhaps they weren't really friends anymore. <laughs> Apparently. The following years, Kjærholm continued experimenting with different materials and production Mm. methods. He developed a series of concrete outdoor furniture Mm. to be used at rest stops along the Danish highway system. 
a single piece S-shaped outdoor chair and a side chair with a split plywood seat to be used at the F.L. Schmidt Concrete Company. Mm -hmm. None of these chairs were a commercial su success. The rest stop furniture were installed in about 20 different locations, mm. but the S-shaped outdoor chair remained a prototype and was never put into serial production. The colleague Van Panton managed to create a similar one-piece fiberglass chair some years later, but that's another story. Yeah. But I love that. Yeah, <laughs> wonderful chair. The split plywood chair is an even sadder story. One day in 1954, the owner of F.L. Schmidt inspected a prototype of the chair and announced that he would never sit on such a chair. And the project <laughs> obviously came to a sudden end. Yeah. So, in 1955, Scherholm had a huge lot of sketches and prototypes, but financially his work had been far from successful. Apart from the 20 aluminum chairs made for Sörensen and the concrete rest of furniture made in small numbers, none of the furniture had made it to serial production. In a way, the first years of his career were filled with like disappointments and rejections, but this would soon come to change. In 1955, he was approached by the furniture merchant uh, Eivind called Christensen. And the two men shared an interest in innovation and industrial serial production, and soon initiated a close collaboration. In contrast to most furniture manufacturers at the time, Christensen didn't have a factory for the production. Instead, he signed contracts with a lot of uh, different sub-suppliers to produce different components. The blacksmith uh, Herluf Paulsen was hired to make the metal parts and the master upholsterer Ivan Slechter to do the up upholstery work. And some years later the cabinet maker Einar Pedersen was hired to make wooden parts uh, like the wooden table tops and stuff. Mm. And the different parts were to be sent to the Christensen showroom and then assembled there. Yeah. Scherholm immediately designed a logo type mm. for the new company, E. Kold Christensen, and started making sketches of new furniture. The first pieces of furniture launched for E. Kold Christensen in 1956 was a set of steel chairs and a series of minimalistic tables with wooden tops and steel legs. Mm. The chairs named PK1, 2 and 3 <laughs> were made from tubular steel wrapped with rope, cane or leather. The same year, Scherholm also launched two classics, the lounge chair PK-22 and the low table PK-61. Yeah. The PK-22 was obviously a refinement of the PK-25, made from several pieces and with a more comfortable upholstery. Mm. The PK-61 table, on the other hand, was a development of the MR-150 coffee table designed by Miss van der Rohe and Lili Reich in the 1930s. It was during the development of these furniture, Scherholm introduced the industrial screw as an important element in the construction as well as the design. The screws were originally intended to be used for heavy machinery, but Scherholm found them perfect for his furniture. They gave the pieces a ready-made look and uh, unnecessary welding could be avoided. Uh, now let's take a look at some of all the amazing pieces developed by Scherholm at the time. Yeah. Scherholm already had a huge lot of uh, unrealized ideas and sketches when the collaboration with uh, Christensen started and therefore it was easy for him to come up with a large number of successful pieces of furniture in a relatively short period of time. 
In the 1960s, the collection of different models grew even further. The Sculptural dining chair PK9 was introduced in 1960, made from fiberglass, covered in leather, standing on a graceful, uh, on three graceful metal legs. For the PK9, Charon also designed the large dining table PK54 with a round marble top resting on a geometric metal base. And even though uh, he is best known for his metal frames, Charon also designed some uh, successful wooden furniture. In 1965, he was commissioned to design furniture intended to be a gift from the state of Denmark to the John F. Kennedy Center in Washington. A result of this was a sofa made from laminated wood and leather. And this project was never realized for economical reasons. It was too expensive for Denmark. <laughs> for Denmark, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, um, uh, but the design was reused by Kjærholm in 1971 when designing the wooden PK27 lounge chair. The extremely successful collaboration between Kjærholm and Christensen continued for 25 mm. years and resulted in a huge lot of classic furniture still in production today. In the late 70s, Scherholm was diagnosed with lung cancer and passed away in 1980 at the young age of 51. Yeah. I don't want to think about that. Shortly after, Elvin called Christensen sold the business to Fritz Hansen <laughs> yeah. with the license for many of the designs. A bit ironic considering it was Fritz Hansen who rejected Scherholm back in the 50s. Yes. And yeah, th this was our introduction to uh, Paul Kjærholm. We already have some videos about Kjærholm furniture and so on. And in the future we will do uh, probably more videos about Kjærholm. But but hope you liked this video. Yeah, and check those videos out. Yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you so much for watching.